Good morning. Welcome everyone this morning. Glad to see everybody today. I hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving. I know for most it was different than we usually have, but um, I know my family, it was smaller, but we had a nice celebration at home and I only burned one or two things. <laughs> Just sort of kidding <laughs> about that. Um, but we had a lovely, a lovely day. Um, my name is Jen Tabor Osterfeld. I'm the Minister of Christian Education here, and I thank Pastor Hayden for inviting me to fill in for him while he is on vacation, and I hope that he's having an opportunity to rest before the upcoming weeks. As you heard, we have a lot going on at Mount Zion, and so make sure you are checking the website and Facebook and staying up to date as things change. We continue to monitor the situation with COVID, and so we'll continue to make adjustments as we need to. So just make sure you're reading emails thoroughly and, and just paying attention to what's going on. But we have a lot of exciting opportunities that allow us to be online and be social distanced on the field so we can continue to celebrate this season. If you would take a moment and just bow with me for prayer. In the name of Jesus, God, I ask that your thoughts will be our thoughts and your words will be our words, that either because of me or in spite of me, you will speak to your people who have gathered here in the sanctuary and online this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I, today I gather that you all have figured out that it's the first Sunday in Advent. If not, take off your glasses and get the fog off of them because... <laughs> You've uh, missed some decorations in the room, but um, I love the first Sunday in Advent, entering the sanctuary and seeing all the decorations and the lights and the evergreen, it, um, all things that point us to what this season is really about. Um, I do want to thank those people who took time to decorate the sanctuary. Usually we have a big decorating party. Uh, this year we obviously had to do that differently so we could social distance. But, um, but our worship space this morning is beautiful, and I hope you can all see that online today as well. And as I entered this morning, I took a quiet moment just in here um, just to take it all in. The, the lights, the evergreen trees, the garland, the, the blue paraments on the altar area, just so many symbols um, that point us to Jesus and his light and majesty um, are all so important. And so take time, take notice of all of that, soak it in. And this season of Advent is a time when we prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus. And the word Advent means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. And in Latin, Advent means coming. What, though, are we supposed to be doing during this season of Advent? Are we supposed to be hanging lights and wrapping presents and decorating trees? What do we expect this season? A pile of presents on Christmas morning? A small box with something sparkly under it, under the tree? Ricky, are you listening back there? <laughs> lots and lots of cookies? Maybe, maybe. But is it possible that we have a bigger task at hand? Some big event to prepare for? What we can expect is so much bigger than what we can even imagine. We can expect the unexpected. We're not to be sitting idle. The season of Advent should be busy and active, but not in the way that I think we usually think. To quote the Grinch, Christmas came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore, then the Grinch thought, something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more? Now, don't get me wrong. My house has no less than five decorated Christmas trees, and I just told my family that they are no longer allowed to check the mail or bring in packages because many Christmas surprises will be arriving. My mother was known for baking 14 different kinds of Christmas cookies. And sure, I'm not as talented as her, so don't expect that, just <laughs> so we're clear. 
<laughs> and sure, these things are all fun, and many of these things, as I mentioned earlier, help point us to Jesus. And Christmas is a great feast. It is a celebration, the celebration of the arrival of the Messiah. But there's so much more to still be preparing for. So let's take a look at Elizabeth and Zechariah, parents of John the Baptist, starting with Luke 1, verses 5 through 13. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. I kind of like that line. That was a really good way the writer phrased that, that they were getting on in years. <laughs> Once, when he was serving as a priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at that time, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. We heard in... That's the end of 13. <laughs> we heard in the scripture that Zechariah and Elizabeth were getting on in years. But what is especially important here is that they were praying faithfully for a child, despite what it may seem like impossible circumstances. And their prayers were heard. They were praying expectantly. They prayed expecting that God was going to provide for, him, for them. There's a long history of God providing children to the faithful, no matter their age. Think of Abraham and Sarah from the Old Testament. What does it mean to pray expectantly? To pray expectantly is to pray with confidence that we are joining God. The apostles call on the name of Jesus in prayer and confidence. They pray expecting God will respond. We're to pray in that way so that we know our prayers are heard and will make a difference. In 1 Corinthians 3, 9, Paul declares that we are co-laborers with God. This is so important as we prepare the way. This is a step we cannot miss when we're talking about the season of Advent and the advent of Jesus. We need to be praying expectantly and faithfully. Prayer isn't just passive. It's not inactive. If we pray but do, we not, but do not expect God's action, miracles, and intervention, then why pray at all? If we are to prepare for the way of the Lord, then we must be connected to the Lord our God. To know how to pray, prepare. To know how to point others to God. If we're not connected to God, then how can we point others to God? We must call upon the Holy Spirit to guide us. We must expect that our prayers will be answered in the way that Elizabeth and Zechariah do. We should not be surprised when our prayers are answered when we pray with faithfulness and expectation. Zechariah did that. He was surprised, and he had to learn by being silenced, which we'll see in the next part of the scripture, in order for him to learn to trust God more fully. He needed a little bit of perspective by quieting his mouth to see the power of God and that God truly does have everything under control despite what we see in the world. That we are not in control. And that to have power we have to be connected to God and not be surprised when the unexpected happens. 
to believe it when our prayers are answered, because why would we doubt God answering prayers or to provide miracles? And when we see God's miracles, to give God the credit, trusting God's faithfulness. The next part of our scripture says, picking up at Luke 1, 14 through 20, it says, You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will, he, meaning John the Baptist, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. Now hear these words in verse 17. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him, him meaning Jesus, to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that it is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. Gentlemen, don't say that about your wives. Friends, just let's be clear. <laughs> the angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. I don't know if you noticed that verse 17 probably sounded a little bit familiar, that we heard very similar words when we heard the Old Testament reading this morning in Malachi. So this wasn't news. John the Baptist was as expected as the Messiah. There was always going to be someone to prepare the way for Jesus. Now Advent is not only about our celebration of the baby Jesus arriving on the scene 2,000 years ago, although this is a very, very important event. It should be celebrated. Without the birth, there is not the death and resurrection which defeats sin and its consequence, death. Jesus' birth was monumental, I think we can all agree. He is Emmanuel, God with us, the hope for all creation, an answer to hundreds and hundreds of years of prayer. Jesus' birth blows the minds of everyone because it is unexpected. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but unexpected people from unexpected places in unexpected times are very often called to participate in God's plan in what seems to us like unexpected ways. Let's face it, the Messiah being born in a stable to two teenagers from Nazareth is pretty mind-blowing. But let's not lose sight today of the lesson to be learned from John the Baptist just yet. John's birth comes with its own reason to rejoice. John was given a specific task that Gabriel tells Zechariah about. John the Baptist's mission was to bring Israel back to God, point them in the right direction, effect a reconciliation, and prepare them for the approaching redemption that would come with Jesus. Gabriel tells Zechariah that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Even before he was born, he would be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we shouldn't have been surprised when he recognized Jesus in the womb. It was commonly believed that there had been no prophet since the time of Malachi. The scripture we heard earlier from the Old Testament, there had been no prophets since that time. So the announcement of John's birth, that he would be filled with the Holy Spirit, was an indication that this was the beginning of the Messianic age. John the Baptist would lead the way for Jesus. He will get the people ready to hear the ministry, to hear the words that Jesus would have for them, to see the miracles 
He prepared the way. The birth of John the Baptist would inaugurate the dawn of Israel's freedom from its enemies and the establishment of God's salvation and peace in Israel. John the Baptist had a pretty big task as he prepared for the advent of Jesus' ministry, death, and resurrection. John's birth alone was the announcement that something big was about to happen that was going to change the world. And it was his job to make sure the people were ready. The season of Advent, though, is also for us about preparing for Christ's return. We were told Christ will come again. We declare it in our communion liturgy that we know Christ will come again. Are we ready? Is the world ready for that? Knowing that has some powerful implications for us. Remember that Jesus told the disciples he would send a counselor, the Holy Spirit, to all of his disciples. And the day of Pentecost, I know, I know, we don't, we don't traditionally hear the day of Pentecost pulled in on a Sunday in Advent, But hear me out. Pentecost marks the time that the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, wind and fire. And in Acts 1, the disciples first prayed with expectation. I think we heard that before this morning. Then in Acts 2, the Holy Spirit descends upon them and thousands of people are saved. The preparation For Jesus coming back began. So as Jesus' disciples here and now, it sounds like we've been given the same mission as John the Baptist. A monumental mission. A powerful mission. We have a task. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, known as the Great Commission, says... And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We are now those people the ones to go before Jesus, before his coming, his advent, at the fulfillment of time when Jesus returns to his people. We need to teach all the people about repentance and baptize them and prepare prepare the way for the Lord. We have the message of freedom and peace in Jesus Christ to share with the world in a time that is filled with darkness and oppression. Not that dissimilar from when Jesus came 2,000 years ago. We remember Christ's birth because it was the entrance to a time of freedom, of peace, of joy, of hope. Jesus is always the answer when we pray expectantly with faithful hearts. Let us follow the guidance of the apostles of the early church and share this good news with urgency, preparing the way for the Lord. We heard in Romans 13, it says, Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from your sleep. Wake up, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone and the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Wake up. This is not a message we can keep silent. We can't keep it to ourselves. Now is not the time to be quiet. So prepare this Christmas with the trees and the cookies and bright lights. If you drive by our house, make sure you have some sunglasses and don't look at it directly because 
you, you might go blind. <laughs> but more importantly, much more importantly, pray expectantly, knowing and being ready for Jesus to return. Trust God's faithfulness and be ready for miracles everywhere. We have in here the evidence of that. Miracles are all around to in unexpected people in unexpected times. You are no less unexpected than anyone in this book. We have a job to do. This world needs to know Jesus. It needs freedom and healing. It needs peace and love pick up the mantle left by John the Baptist and work to bring others to reconciliation with God. This is our mission. We've spent weeks listening to Pastor Hayden talk to us about discipleship. This is discipleship. This is preparing for the ultimate advent with great expectation. Expect Jesus to show up now. Be ready for it. Prepare for it. Tell all the people that the advent of Jesus Christ is upon us, and there is no time to delay in knowing him. We are called to go before him, preparing the way for the Lord, baptizing them and teaching them all that Jesus commanded. Expect miracles. Be ready for the advent of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, meet me in the waiting, the place where I long for what is not fully in view. Still my heart and give me the ability to know that you are near. I believe your plans are good. I see it in the birth of your only son. But sometimes I struggle to see beyond the darkness that surrounds me. Renew my confidence as I lift my eyes in the hope that lights up the darkness. Be glorified in my life during this season of expectation. Guide my hands and feet and give me the words to say to prepare the way for Jesus' return. Help me not to lose sight of the miracle of Jesus' birth 2,000 years ago. And in the midst of the hustle and bustle of this Advent season, remind me to keep my eyes turned fully to you, God. Amen.